Be honest. While on the field of combat, have you ever thought about dual wielding shields? A dual shielding, if you will? No? Look, uh, today's video is going to be very different from my other videos because today's build is going to only appeal to a very specific group of players in very specific situations. Using two shields not only for their defensive capabilities but also for overtly offensive purposes is probably one of those ideas you thought was cool for like 15 seconds before it immediately crumbled under the weight of even the most basic form of scrutiny. But no worries, because this is Dungeons and & Dragons, and it wouldn't really be the only time impractical or completely ahistoric combat techniques made themselves known. So for those of you interested in what little info I could cobble together for this build, stay tuned. It's going to be a doozy. So the first and most important question, will this work? Well, the short answer is no, it's not really effective at all if we're going by the rules as written. This video is more about getting what little effectiveness you can out of it and finding reasonable or hilarious motivations to do so. I know a lot of people play with strict DMs, strict groups, or are in adventurers leagues, and those groups are simply not going to allow much to happen with the idea of a dual shielder for many legitimate reasons. For one, shields are improvised weapons that only do 1d4 plus strength, so being a real damage dealer is going to go right out the window, though I will touch upon more on this topic in just a second. In addition to this, the plus 2 AC bonus from shields does not stack, even if you're carrying two of them, so becoming an imposing shield tank is also just not going to happen at least if you're depending on the shields to be the thing that tips the balance in your favor. I bring all this up at the beginning just so you're aware how much of a mechanical mess this is, and I know a lot of the builds and multiclasses we talk about here on Skull Splitter are usually done so with the goal of optimization in mind, but you're probably not interested in dual shielding because it's useful or practical or allowed, but because it seems really, 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 really funny. So... How can we scrape something together that's somewhat useful? The first step to building a dual shielder is unfortunately convincing your DM. I'm not saying you aren't a fun DM if you don't bend the rules a little bit or if you never revert to the rule of cool. I'm just saying that for the weirder builds like a dual shielder, you might have to loosen up just a little. And don't worry, DMs, there's a high likelihood of fatal error with a character like this, so even if they bug you, they won't bug you for long. For those of you that don't mind doing a little bit of homebrewing or really stretching the definition of certain rules, I think you'll find the process of balancing much, much less crafting a dual shielder character to be quite enjoyable. For you players out there, like I said, this is not a powerful build even if concessions are made. So it should be easy to pitch to your DM in that sense. You're not going to be rolling through fights, eating up the action economy, or anything like that. If anything, just try to come up with a fun story-based reason why you want a character that carries two shields and literally no other weapons. So if you get the green light to go ahead and make your dual shielder, you will need a strategy in mind. I'm not going to give a step-by-step -step breakdown on how to build one, as it seems like it will be more group-specific in terms of what you should be using your dual shielder madman for. I have broken up the dual shielder into two loose categories that I think present the most useful tactics, which basically means I've come up with two scenarios that if you're confident could show up in the campaign or session that you're playing, maybe this will be right for you. But anyway, you'll perhaps obviously want to choose a fighter, barbarian, or paladin, as these all provide stat focuses and extras that will help wring what little usefulness you can out of this thing. The first tactic I have listed here is Shove Artist, using a Fighter Barbarian multiclass with at least five levels in Barbarian so that you can get the extra attack, and two levels in Fighter to get the Action Surge and Defense Fighting style. Using a shield as a bashing weapon is nothing new, but it may surprise a few enemies if one character just makes that their whole... well, their whole thing. The idea here is to use your dual shielder to knock enemies off of high surfaces or into hazards, such as damaging area of effect spells that your ally threw out. By taking the shield master feat, you'll be able to do just that, as it allows you to use your bonus action to shove a creature within 5 feet of you. It may be obvious, but everything here will involve taking this feature at some point, so just be ready for that. If possible, as you level up, you may also want to pick up the dual wielder feat to unlock some new tricks. 
This is where your DM may need to, not may need to, they will need to make a big exception. While the Shieldmaster feat does turn your shield into an offensive tool, it doesn't technically make it a melee weapon or anything that you can become proficient in. At least that's the strict interpretation I get out of it. Frankly though, I don't think it's a big stretch to convince your party or DM that your character has made the life choice to train vigorously learning the combat effectiveness of the shield, so much so that it can classify as a melee weapon. Okay, that's still a bit of a stretch, but it makes a little bit more sense than referring to it as an improvised weapon in this specific instance. I mean, supposedly your character is using these all the time, so it's far from improvised. So if by some miracle you get cleared to count the shield as a melee weapon, which it isn't, you'll be able to add another 1 AC from your other shield. Which, yes, would be the same with any melee weapon you had in that hand, it doesn't have to be a shield, but whatever. I'm trying to find as many little bonuses to this silly idea as I can. Oh yeah, you also become able to draw both shields at once, which will definitely help you get into the thick of things much quicker, but Yay. When I picture a scenario that this could be used in, I think the most helpful one that comes to mind is fighting a horde of small creatures, preferably during a siege atop a high wall or something like that, or near environmental hazards. With all the small attacks you'll be dishing out as well as their additional shoves, you'll at very least give the appearance of trying to help with your double shields. Which should, by the way, be both either heater shields or round shields. It, at least in my mind. To make a small but significant alteration to this, you can also throw a little bit of Paladin Multiclass into the mix in order to grant yourself some Divine Smiting damage on set attacks, as well as the occasional buffing spell. This would also allow you to pivot your strategy to what I call an Arrow Magnet. Let's keep the scenarios for your Dual Shielder as situational and specific as possible, and assume you want to bravely lead some fleshy NPCs through a barrage of Arrow Fire, like any honorable Paladin would do. While you can still do your bashing, drawing fire towards you like a World War tank protecting infantry behind you is sort of the goal that we're going for here. Again, your DM may need to really bend some rules here for maximum effectiveness, and your enemy may only need to be firing exclusively from your front flank, but I'd like to believe that two large shields makes a bit of a difference to the people cowering behind the combatant holding them. People that are generally a lot more killable than you, especially for dramatic effect. While making sure you have a lot of useful things like the Shield of Faith spell ready to go is always good, the key thing you want here is actually a specialized piece of equipment sure to puzzle DMs everywhere called the Arrow Catcher Shield. These grant an extra plus 2 AC against ranged attacks against you in addition to the already existing plus 2 AC bonus from regular attacks. They also allow you to become a target if an attacker fires something at someone within 5 feet of you. Holding two of those things will not stack both bonuses or anything, at least not in rules as written, but in terms of role-playing, I'm pretty certain this is one of the most helpful and visually hilarious uses of the dual shielder. I should probably state, do not take the similarly named Shield of Missile Attraction, as it may seem better by its title, but it's really not and is, in fact, cursed. If you have to switch to anything, maybe choose a Spell Guard Shield in case it's a magical barrage you're dealing with, but that's probably the only alteration to a arrow magnet I would make. While we're on the topic of other shield types, this is probably the only way you're going to be able to improve your dual shielder without giving your DM a headache or by giving the rules the middle finger. The arrow catching shield is fun, but there are also other things like the Lizard Folk Spike Shield. These are both visually exciting and slightly more damaging with a 1d6 plus 2 slashing damage, though this may not be a good example seeing as they were made for NPC Lizard Folk and not for players. Getting things from the rulebook that are allowed, such as shield plus 1, 2, or 3, is an obvious way to go through magical means, but why do that when you could get something preposterous like an animated shield that will literally float in front of you like you're wielding it for one minute? That doesn't make it useless or anything, it's just you've only got one minute. Uh, these were only some of the variations of shields I could find. Uh, I'm sure there are more, and if we opened it up to homebrewing, I guarantee there's more types of shields that could help, but... Uh, you can see I'm starting to spiral out when I try to find usefulness for this build. I'm sorry, I'm really running out of ideas here. So this video is kind of ending abruptly because I can only take a bad idea to so far of a logical conclusion. Frankly, I want to hear what ideas you guys have in order to make a dual shielder work and what kind of scenarios you would consider playing one in. You guys always come up with better ideas than I do in the comments section, so... 
why you'd play one as opposed to just using two shields when you're able to for the scenarios I've listed above is beyond me. But hey, I'm still all about the two shield combatant experiment the internet insists on trying. So please let me know if you have tried it yourself or if you found a way to make this work in any sort of like actual way. I, I didn't even get into the types of races you can play today because my mind just sort of started short circuiting when I thought of the tortle and other things like that. So if you guys have any ideas on how to make this work, I have scoured what sources I could, and it seems like a popular idea online, like to build something with two shields, but this is about as good as I could do. I would like to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe because we put out new videos every week, usually videos that are less theoretical and speculative, but we got new videos every week. <laughs> if you guys have a build in mind that you would like me to cover or do research on, please let me know down in the comments. And again, if you have made a dual shielder, please tell me about that experience down in the comments as well. My name is Patrick Ferguson from Skull Splitter Dice, and until next time, farewell.